Welcome back to Vigor. It's your boy. You know what? I mean, just call me Jet, okay? I'm not really too sure about the stealth part no more. Honestly. Honestly. So, just call me Jet. And the thing is, there is a Jet, well, like a Jet classification that works for what I'm doing. It's called a multi-role fighter. But, nah, that too long of a name. So, just call me Jet. Now, I decide to take out the MP5K suppressed submachine gun on the Grand Time Valley. That's what I plan to do. And as we all know, if you're a, I would say long time, but I mean, I'm just getting started to be honest. If you're a long time viewer of this channel, then you will know this is my favorite map. This is my favorite map. I mean, it's, it's perfect. You got food, you got loot, you got close quarters, urban environment. There are some open areas and there are some sniping spots too, but this map is perfect. In my opinion, this, this map is perfect in my opinion. And so I'm going to loot this barn and search it to only find I get pinged by a PSD. At this point, I'm tired of it. If they come, they come. We, we gonna bang it out if they come. Because I'm tired of just thinking like, why are they using the PSD at the very beginning of the damn match? You see, it's stuff like that. It's stuff like that that made me have that run of encounters this past week. That angered me. And so, this is how, well, my runs on my past week, this past week, that's my response. Now that I got it out my system, I may return to normal or I may be changed forever. We'll, the world may never know. Now, I'm approaching these windows. And then I hear something. Go prone, plug the MP5, and wait near a corner of the window. This is good. This is good for me because I actually blend in with the house and surroundings for a little bit. Jump out the window because I'm like, maybe this is the dude who pinged me at the beginning of the match. That's him. But look, though, look, though. See how I'm aiming at him? But I don't fire. I get you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. But if I were to shoot at him, where would my cover be at? Yeah, I know there's an electrical box right there. But anywhere else? No. The guy's out in the open. Well, I'm out in the open, basically. So, I let him go. He may thin out the herd for me a little bit more. But look what I'm doing right here. I'm on his, I'm on his trail. And no, I'm not going to loot any of these cars. I'm not going to loot any of these cars. Now, where would he be going? To the time safe. And the time safe was just unlocked. So it's only a matter of time until we hear gunshots. And then the tether goes off once again. But it's all the way on the other side of the map. Not even worried about it. I'm going to pull up my MP5. Just to be on the safe side. Then somebody uses the disruptive tower. And there you go. A picture. Yay. I know gunshots going off. But that's expected. He ran toward. That's an H bar T. He ran toward the time safe. And the time safe was just unlocked. Like, right, come on now. Two plus two equals four. There's gonna be a gunfight. A very intense gunfight from the sound of it. So now these guys are playing Call of Duty. That was two grenades. Now did it come from the same person? I don't know. But look though. Look though. Two people are fighting up there. One person is to my right, looting a car. And you see them. They're over there. So we now hear four people. One person at the car, two people fighting it out over here. 
in a fourth person out in the distance taking shots at somebody. So we got a lot to process. But also, as a lone wolf, well, as a logical lone wolf player, and you see, that's why I know I'm in the right direction. Stray bullets flying past me. That means that whoever that guy is shooting at is right in front of me. It's dangerous, but it's smart. So, the sounds of gunshots are amazing because that tells me people are dying. Leaves me less room, or actually more room, to roam around the map. So what I'm going to do is pretty much chill up here and see if I can hear and or see anybody. Now I know this is dangerous because all it takes is somebody to aim at me from the houses and I'm pretty much dead. But I'm going to take that risk. But I get pinged. Transmitter activated. Run into the house. Because what I'm going to do here is something slightly uh, spooky. Pull out the picture, study where the picture is at, and listen, and listen to see if there's any footsteps approaching me. But there isn't. And so, I'm gonna loot this house because there is some stuff in here to take care of. And I'm gonna exit the house. Because I don't, there's no gunshots, there's no glint. I take that back. There is gunshots, but there is no glint. And yeah. Now I'm thinking, let me head toward the sound of those gunshots. But this map has some uh, some very peculiar uh, uh, ambient um, sounds, background noise, if that makes any sense. So it slows me down a little bit. But I'm not really worried about that. Now, that picture, as I'm looking at it, Something says, check the map. They're fighting on a bridge. That's an HRT I can get. Now, I may have bought, as I find another picture, I may have bought the wrong weapon for this kind of engagement I'm about to get into, but you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Now, I don't intend to kill this man. I don't. But what I do intend to do is scare him for a little bit. And you see he's right there. And you see that's why I didn't take any more shots. Because body armor. Whenever I heard that first metal ding, I did that just to get rid of his body armor. If he has like two charges of it, and I thought I saw somebody right there. If he has two charges of it, then cool. There goes one, right? But I did that just to soften him up. Now, if I had a VSS or H bar T, that would have been a clean headshot. But it's hard. It's not impo It's not impossible. But it's hard to get head to get headshots with an iron sights on an MP5. Plus, it is suppressed, so you know bullet drop is a thing. Now, what am I planning to do? Loot this body. Airdrop incoming. Get ready. And as if it is a sign from heaven, a VSS VSS is right here and all the ammunition I can ever need. But I hear somebody to my right. So I take cover. Then I think. If I get ambushed, no no no. Not even ambushed. He he doesn't know I'm here. If somebody comes around this corner, what will be the best weapon for that engagement? The MP5 because of the fire rate. Yes, the VSS hits harder, but there's less there is less clip capacity. So I'm gonna sneak up to this body, grab a little bit more ammunition, and back up. Close the door. Sounds like the guy just killed another person. All good for me. Reload the VSS one more time just to put an extra bullet in the chamber. And I open it, open this window to see if there's anybody outside. Something says, go downstairs. You can't say anything. You cannot see anything from up there. And yes, I know. My bag is looking pretty heavy. I know. And so I'm going to chill right here. Yes, the door is open, but I don't want to close it. 
sure enough, somebody walks into the White House in front of me. And so I'm thinking, right? Now will be the good time to use a VSS. Because if I can get like three shots into him as he's coming out that door, it slides out. But I'm thinking, why would it be heading inside that house? I don't know it just yet as I'm playing the game. But now I do. The airdrop is in the direction that he's heading. Now look, I may not be the most aggressive player, but I will watch you until you mess up. And I will listen to you until you mess up. So knowing that he's heading in a general direction of the airdrop and knowing that I have the two pictures that spawn, well, it may be four, pictures that spawn in the encounter, this guy's not going for a buried cache. He's not even trying to exit. He's going for an airdrop. Now watch this. What? Look at the top of your screen. There's two boxes. And then a stick figure with a box. He got an airdrop. Now I'll pull out the VSS. Because I need the stopping power. This may be the guy with the body armor. He may have another charge. We don't know. And so, I'm running parallel to him. There you go. Kick it in the high gear. I'm running parallel to him but also keeping out of sight. If I can catch glimpses of you heading in one direction, I can figure out where you're going. And this guy's trying to be extra safe. Notice he ran behind the house. But look, out of all the shots that I did not take this entire encounter, right here is when I realized this is perfect. This is perfect. And so I crouch to make sure he doesn't hear me. There you go. This guy was running straight and look, look up, look at the area I'm in right now. Where's his cover? In front of him and to the right. And I use my PSD just to make sure that nobody's around. And sure enough, nobody's around. I engaged him right here because he would have had only like four places to be at or four places to cover. Well, to take cover behind. And if I don't let him get any further up, he would have had the woods to hide in he would have had the depot to hide in but right here I can still keep an eye on him and you know what fight me in the comments fight me in the comments here's my reasoning behind that trade the reasoning is this I don't use an mp5 much but I damn sure use a damn sure use a VSS and so with that being on my back that's the encounter I may not take all the shots that y'all think that I should take, but trust me, there is a reason why I don't take shots. Me not taking shots is the reason why I survived. If I would have shot the first time when the guy ran around that corner and onto the bridge, he would have had dropped me because I had no cover. Second time, if I would have shot a dude who was at the car, looting the car, I wouldn't have had the right weapon. MP5 isn't good at far range. Now granted, I did take the third shot at the guy at the bridge because I was trying to see initially if I can hit his head. But bullet drop is very much a game mechanic in this game. Fourth time, the guy ran into the house. Wasn't the right call. It wasn't. Because he was running into a house. He would have been held up in that house. Fifth time. Fifth time's a charm. Running out in the open. Slow as heck. All the loot on him. That Look, you seen he had all the loot on him. That guy was loaded. And so that, in combination with, in combination with him having no actual cover around him besides like two tanks and I believe a van, I can handle that. I can't handle you running into a forest or running into a depot. I'm trying to kill you so I can get an airdrop. I don't want the airdrop that's already on the ground. You're making the progress for me. If you get killed from some random direction, then I know it's not safe to go here. So then, so then I will turn back around, get an airdrop and go to another exit. But I was stalking him just in case he got shot from somewhere else. 
I was using him as a crash test dummy. Actually, no, more like an exit test dummy, if that makes any sense. But there you have it. I may not take a whole lot of shots, but the shots I do take, they have purpose. And honestly, this video, and probably about three other videos on my playlist, shows you how, in my opinion, in my opinion, you should stalk somebody. That guy had no idea he was being followed until I shot at him with a VSS that's real powerful, broke his armor, and killed him. And look at this. Actually, right here, I'm messaging my Discord because I'm just like, guys, I need a title. But then as like I was, you know, recording this video right now, I actually came up with a title. But as you will see in just a moment, I have five L85A1s. Now, I'm not sure if I posted every time I got one on this channel, but now I have five. It's only a matter of time until I get a plan. Hope y'all enjoyed the video, and I'll catch y'all in the next episode. Until next time, peace.